Hey everyone, welcome back to the Film Fund Podcast. I'm your host, founder and executive producer at the Film Fund, Thomas Verity. I'm also an award-winning filmmaker, producer, and film festival judge. I started the Film Fund to give filmmakers an easier, alternative way to get their film funded. Instead of working on a screenplay, crowdfunding campaign, or grant application, you write one sentence pitching your film for a chance to receive up to $10,000 and other prizes to make it. Our winter 2021 narrative and documentary contests are now open, so check us out at thefilmfund.co to enter your one-sentence pitch for a chance to win up to $10,000 to make your film. The deadline is March 30th, 2021. We want to remind listeners that contests do happen regularly, so if you're listening at a later date, check the website at thefilmfund.co for the most up-to-date information. Today we have Sarah Young, winner of the Film Fund's narrative short film contest. Sarah got a free subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud to help her finish post-production of her film In Case We Got Found. She's an award-winning director and filmmaker and In Case We Got Found is her first professional short film which is enjoying a very successful festival run which is incredibly exciting. Um, Definitely weird in COVID but it's (laughs) happening and we're happy to see uh, multiple films now from the Film Fund winning awards and having great festival experiences. Sarah, thanks so much for coming. You can give a much better background about yourself than I can. Thanks so much. It's so exciting to be here. Um, yeah, that that about covers it. I started out as an opera singer, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Um, did that in my early 20s and was loving it, uh, except my last year of grad school, again, as an opera singer, I took a directing class. Blew my mind, changed my life. Uh, I ended up doing a lot of opera directing for a while and feeling like I wanted to expand into other categories. So I went back to school. I went to theater school, started doing that. Okay. Again, last year of theater school, I took a film class, <laughs> blew my mind, changed my life. And uh, I have been doing um, all three. I've been directing opera and theater, um, but my real love has rapidly become film. And especially mm. during the pandemic, it's been an absolute blessing that I happened to start transitioning into film just before because I've been able to stay busy, which is very lucky. Mm-hmm. How have you been staying busy during the pandemic? Remember well, film? Yeah, just before the pandemic, my uh, school friends and I had got together and went, you know what we should do? We should build our film reels. Uh, So we started shooting just a whole bunch of little short films uh, Mm. that my various playwright friends wrote scripts for. Um, This one was special, in case we get found. This one was, uh, it came from a much more personal place. Um, Mm. If we want to jump into that real quick, my father is a survivor of the Umpqua Community College shooting in Roseburg, Oregon in 2015. Oh, wow. Uh, killed 10 people and injured eight more. It was Oregon's biggest mass shooting. And uh, so, you know, the subject of uh, mass shootings is very personal to me. And I, honest to goodness, can't even remember which mass shooting was in the news this particular day, but it was uh, summer. And I thought, you know what, I really want to do a film that deals with this subject. Uh, And I remembered a playwright friend of mine had written a script um, about people waiting out the the traditional 10 minutes that is uh, traditionally the amount of time you have to wait for the police to show up in a mass Mm -hmm. shooting situation. So I reached out to her and um, asked if we could adapt the script and make a short film from it, and there you go. That is such a good reason to make a film. Um, Reminds me of, I can't remember if it was the last episode or the one before that, But another one of our winners, Daryl Paris Bright, um, she wrote a script or, you know, directed a film about um, the her father, who was a police officer and went into a coma um, and then kind of woke up during covid and the the movement and everything is crazy. So that's it's so just amazing to see how, (coughs) excuse me, our family members really influence um the stories that we tell and our our experiences here um and that's i'm so glad you brought that up too and how you were inspired to make that film because my next question was asking more about that film um so you answered it um what was the process of writing that pitch like because it was so uh, personal one of the things I love about the Film Fund, actually, is it forced me to get better at log lines. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember I, I have a Google Drive that's got synopses for projects I've already done, projects I'd like to do. I have um, I have several scripts that I haven't crossed the boundary into writing my own scripts and filming them yet. That's mm-hmm. my sort of next personal goal. But I have a Google Drive full of synopses. So mm-hmm. uh, when I 
looked at the film fund, I took some synopses that I already had and started trying to turn them into solid log lines. And not having done that before, it was both a frustrating and wonderful experience because it mm -hmm. forced me to get specific, you know, about what exactly is this film, which mm -hmm. I know is the point, and it's it's great. Uh, so it, I was treating it very much as a professional exercise. I need to figure right. out how to do this. Um, mm -hmm. But it's funny because I'll I'll be in professional mode and then I'll sort of sit and think about what it is I'm doing for a minute and then it'll kind of hit me and land and I have to take a beat to be emotional with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely understand that. Um, and that's so, so interesting that you bring up that writing the log line was like a, an exercise for you. It was a good creative professional exercise because so many of our winners have said that um tim viola the first ever winner he said you know really nailing down our log line was so important because you give us you know 200 characters to write this and we have to use say how we're going to use the funding so it was really an, an interesting exercise um i hear that again and again and I'm, I'm so glad that our community is finding that valuable um and balancing you balancing the personal nature of this story with the professional you know your exercises it's got to be interesting as well um so it's, it's cool to hear about how you kind of balance the two what um so this is your first professional film that you've done yeah so so it's summer and my friends and i are making a bunch of short films this one was definitely my most deeply personal um mm -hmm. and then fall hit this is right after i'd graduated in 2019 uh, okay. fall hit and i got busy with a bunch of theatrical and opera productions and to be honest my films just sat their footage just sat in hard drives mm -hmm. as I was doing other things. Uh, then the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I had um, all of my theater and opera gigs indefinitely postponed. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in a situation where I suddenly had oodles of time and I went, oh, I have hours of footage <laughs> on my hard drives. I should make some films happen. Uh, so the first one I finished was In Case We Get Found because again, that was the closest to me, to my heart. Um, and I really, wanted to get it out there. Um, so that was the, the first one that, you know, I took all the way to the finish line. Um, at the same time though, I, I just to go back to your first question that I never completely answered, uh, I'm still editing the other footage from the other short films uh, that we shot then, but my friends and I did manage to find ways to continue to make film um, over the past year, which I'm happy to go into more detail uh, if, if you're yeah, curious about absolutely. that. Yeah, absolutely, please. I was, I was gonna ask, um... We'll it's save a that process. for later. Yeah, just, no, keep keep going. <laughs> tell me, tell me how that works. Absolutely. Um, so it's been a combination of things. I've had a couple of uh, more professional films that producers have brought me in on that um, we had to follow the SAG rules, uh, which means you need your COVID compliance officer. You need to make sure that your set is following very specific rules. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's tested uh, at a certain amount of time before the shoot dates, you know, uh, and it's very involved process uh, that I'm sure is challenging for anyone, but it's particularly challenging for independent filmmakers who are, their budgets are already stretched thin, mm. of course, um, and to suddenly add on top of it um, all these other layers of needing to get everyone tested and needing to get all of these other pieces in place, it's, it's an adventure. So I did two of those. Uh, one of them was particularly fun. We all got tested and then we moved into the space where we were shooting and we all stayed there in quarantine together oh, for wow. a full week. It was, was it basically a, film was camp. It a decent living space or? Oh, it was great. Yeah, That's it was good. great. Um, it was very lucky. We're, the producer and the DP live in the same apartment complex. Oh, okay. So we actually were in their two apartments moving back and forth between oh, the no two way. apartments. That's really fun. It was great. Yeah, it was awesome. It was so much fun. Um, so we did film camp part one and we shot that film. And then actually last month, uh, the creative team and I got together in a cabin in Pennsylvania and we edited the film. Again, no it was way. film camp part two. <laughs> so sad. we all got tested and quarantined and did the thing. <laughs> We're, um, I'm in Pennsylvania right now. Where are you oh, yeah. based? Oh, I'm in New York, uh, and New I'll be York. totally honest with you. I have no idea where in Pennsylvania. I thought we were in upstate New York, and then someone went, "No, yeah. no, we're in Pennsylvania." Mm -hmm. Pencil talking. So it was a lake. It was it. really pretty. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're in Philadelphia here, so it's always good to see oh, some, some PA love. What, I do love um, Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, it's a great city. Um, what were some of the challenges you ran into, either while editing or shooting some of those other films? Well, so the film camp uh, experience was pretty smooth, um, but 
the uh, I have another project that's actually a pilot of a web series that we actually shot just before the the world shut down. Mm. Um, so post production on that has been a little it's been great, but it's been challenging because the team had to scatter um, to various parts of the country, and the the flow of post production notes just became difficult. Um, mm. Of course, personal lives were very much uh, affecting that, and. Um, just being able to get communication in a timely manner. And, and it's just been, um, I think it's taken more time and been more of just a, almost a creative challenge to get mm -hmm. each layer done, you know, the story lock to the sound, to the color, to now we're, we're in the, we're in underscoring, um, which is amazing, but you know, we just sort of feel like we're just pushing and pushing to get this thing mm -hmm. done in a way that if we'd all been in the same city, you know, <clears throat> I have a feeling that would have been a much smoother experience. Yeah. Have you run into challenges um, with the festival circuit being remote? Well, so this was my first festival experience ever. Um, okay, so sure. I don't have a lot of personal experience of what the world once was. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's been my experience that some festivals are really nailing this whole virtual experience thing. They're doing really nice Q and A's online there. I just did the McMinnville film festival in Oregon. Um, okay. and they had a really nice, um, virtual happy hour with the filmmakers. So I was still able to connect and make friends. Um, that's great. But some of the more seasoned people there were talking about, Oh yeah, you know, if we were all here, we'd be partying and, and getting to know each other and going to the after parties. And, and it's funny cause he was saying it and it's like, Oh, I'm glad we're not doing that. But I was sitting here going, Oh, that sounds so nice. <laughs> that sounds really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully that'll come back. Um, at some point, maybe absolutely next year, <laughs> this year, who knows? Um, but you enjoyed the, the virtual networking nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, I have a feeling that obviously just everything's easier in person. Um, mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that I I'm kind of glad that I'm at the beginning of my film journey right now, um, because I feel like right now it's absolutely enough for me to just build some street cred, get my get my name out there, start to meet people. Um, but I'm hoping that with my uh, future projects will be back in person and I can do a little more um, sort of hardcore networking um, because right. I feel like that component is so important for, you know, a young filmmaker. Uh, and so I do hope that we'll be back live fairly soon. But for me right now, uh, this has been, it's been great. And I really appreciate the festivals that have worked really hard to try to keep going during this time. Did you run into any particular challenges promoting the film? Because it was all digital, like people... I know some websites do like geo-targeted screenings where you have to log into a certain website or did you, how was that experience just promoting the film online? I've been lucky. I mean, one of the advantages to my film is it's a six minute micro short, you know, mm -hmm. so it's easy to transfer files wise. Um, and I, I haven't run into any issues, but some of the filmmakers at that networking meeting were talking about running into issues with their sound somehow getting messed up during digital um, transfer and just mm -hmm. having having issues like that. So I have not personally had that happen, but I, I know it is a challenge for some people. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely been interesting trying to navigate all of this. Um, hoping things return to some semblance of normal soon. Um, but it's also so cool to see filmmakers innovating and making this happen. Um, and the fact that you created an award-winning film, like during a pandemic wrap post on it and it's at festivals is incredible. Um, and we're so happy oh. to have helped out with the, post-production what thank you yeah, yeah. i'm so grateful i was just gonna say i forgot to mention my 28 minute zoom film magnum opus that i just sent to some film festivals uh and <laughs> to my joy and shock uh we've been selected for three uh it's no way, I mention awesome. 28 minutes long <laughs> wow good for you but, so you said yeah, it's a, a zoom film yeah um a group of friends and i just really fantastic friends and a playwright named uh, peter chansky were determined at the beginning to do s just to stay creative. Uh, mm. So Peter wrote this really amazing Zoom script. Uh, it's, a, it's a big cast. It's uh, nine people total. Um, okay. And we shot it entirely on Zoom, you know, everybody in their individual houses. Um, and that was an adventure to edit, I can tell you. Uh, but we, I got it edited um, and s sent it out into the world. It started out at uh, 50 minutes. <laughs> Oh, wow. We may have gone a little crazy is what I'm saying, um, mm -hmm. but we got it down to, to 28 and 
it's, I mean, my, the actors are wonderful. The script is great. So I'm not surprised that it's going well, but it is a Zoom film, you know, mm -hmm. so there's only so much you can do to stay, uh, to make it interesting visually, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's one of those things where I had absolutely no idea if that was going to, um, what is it about? It was fancy. <laughs> What's it about? It's about a group of out of work actors dealing with the pandemic. Um, and yep very relatable they're <laughs> they're logging on to rehearse a zoom film uh, sorry it's a, a zoom play um and reality starts to fracture around them and they sort of get pulled into repeating <laughs> repeating their day and repeating what we've already seen except slightly different each time sort of the more truth of their situation starts to bubble up so at first they're going oh we're completely fine and then by the end it's complete chaos um mm -hmm. so it was a lot of fun to film that sounds interesting um, best of luck on the future festivals. Um, it's so awesome. It's already gotten into three. There's a <laughs> film, I think it's called Friended. It's a, like a horror film that takes completely yes. on a uh, place on screen. Um, f you know, I, I, I don't know if they say what video chat software it is, but something like zoom. Um, and you see like them on Facebook and this creepy like stalker guy is friending them and something happens. So it's, it's definitely, um, that format isn't just strictly from the pandemic i've seen that um before too but it's interesting to see it now coming back because of the pandemic um it's definitely a creative way to tell a story with the resources you have did you for the actors were did they just use the webcams that they had on hand or did you supply like external cameras no nope. <coughs> just webcams just webcams which did prove challenging in the final edit because i was uh struggling to tr struggling to try to make the quality consistent um mm. and obviously it, it just wasn't the the raw footage just wasn't consistent uh so mm. if i if i was to do another zoom film which honestly i'm hoping doesn't happen but if it does i think i would probably try to be more uniform in terms of uh the format everyone was filming on but mm. it's a zoom film you know it's it's style yeah. let's go with that yeah there you <laughs> go exactly um amazing to work with what you have and that's so cool it's, it's doing well um what advice would you give to filmmakers or even artists. I mean, you have a really broad background coming from opera and theater and film. Um, I'm sure that gives you a very unique perspective on set when directing. Um, so yeah, what's some advice from any of your experiences you would give? Well, specifically with filmmaking, um, you know, I, I kind of came to it uh, later in my creative process as a director. Um, and I feel like the greatest education I've had with it um, was to simply make, simply make content, make short films, just get together with any creatives in your life and just make film. Not only does it help your technical skills, technical skills, but it helped me figure out what it is I wanted to be making, um, which I think is just as important as anything else. I feel like for my journey, having spent basically a year um, just making things and being very proud of, of what we've accomplished, I feel like only now I can sort of zero in on what it is that I personally want to put out into the world. Um, and I don't think I've got, I would have gotten there if I hadn't experimented with what my voice was on film. Mm -hmm. What do you have in store for the future? Uh, so we're still in post for those uh, two short films we shot that were COVID compliant. Um, mm -hmm. My web series pilot is so close <laughs> to being ready to go out into the world. Um, that's Friends Can't Kiss. I'm ho we're hoping to launch it this spring. Okay. Uh, and then I'm really excited. I have a script that I'm writing um, that's a, a horror short that, it'll, again, it'll be my first time shooting my own script. Um, so I'm putting a lot of love and care into that, and I'm hoping to have it um, fully drafted and have pre-production done over the spring and into the summer. And I'm hoping to shoot it in the fall. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. So are you hoping everything will be better with COVID or not completely better, but in a better place when you're ready to shoot? Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely hoping it'll be in a better place, but honestly, it's more about just making sure that I take the time to really prepare this one properly. Mm -hmm. And is this um, a feature so script? Did you say? No, it's a short. It's a short. It's a short. I, I feel my feature is on my five-year plan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite there yet. Uh, I have an idea for it, but I, I'm, I'm waiting for that one. Um, mm -hmm. No, this is just short. Um, and it's, it's definitely, I mean, obviously, I would love the world to get a little easier by the time we're shooting, but it's more about properly taking the time to prepare this one um, because mm -hmm. I really want to make sure that it has all the care and support that it needs, that uh, quality is not an issue, that it is, is ready to go. Mm -hmm. That definitely makes sense. Um, 
COVID or not COVID, you want to have everything really, really, I was going to say locked down, which is a bad choice of words <laughs> given the pandemic, but <laughs> everything on point and, and ready to go in pre-production. So I, I definitely um, see where you're coming from with that and understand taking time. Um, I'm in pre-production for a short myself, separate from the film fund, just passion project. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, you have your normal challenges like finding locations and transportation. And now it's like, okay, well, I wrote a hospital scene and it's COVID. So where, mm -hmm. <laughs> where and how the hell am I going to film that? So um, I was also asking on a personal note um, regarding my project, like, hmm, is she waiting for COVID to end? Or so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what to do with well, mine. Well, I don't have a hospital scene, so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Might be a sound little difficult. Tape? You could do a sound stage. Yeah, I mean, we thought of that. Um, yeah. There's also this one place I found that is, it used to be like a doctor's office. They converted into like a medical facility that's made for shooting video in. So we may look at that. Um, there you go. But yeah, not to make this about me, but <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <fascinating>. curious. <laughs> Um, I'm more than happy to talk about it. <laughs> Sarah, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, thank, I want to thank our listeners for tuning into the podcast and remind you that our winter 2021 narrative and documentary contests are now open. Check them out at thefilmfund.co. Submit your entry and check out our social media channels. You can win prizes such as up to $10,000 in cash, Adobe Creative Cloud subscriptions like Sarah won for her film. Um, you can also win equipment gift cards from KitSplit and more, depending on if we wrangle up any sponsors this time around. We will keep you posted. Check out the website regularly for the most up-to-date information. And also check out our blog, which is filled with amazing filmmaking and producing tips. Sign up for our newsletter there. Follow us on social media to stay up-to-date on what's happening at the Film Fund. We also have something exciting. We have a new ebook. It's the ultimate guide to pre-production. So Sarah, while you're working on pre-production for your film, you may want to check that out. Go to thefilmfund.co. You can see the resources tab at the top. Click on that, enter your email address, and download for amazing tips on the pre-production process. It is completely free. Again, I want to thank everyone for listening. Sarah, thank you so much. Do you have anything else you want to add before we wrap up? No, thanks so much, and I'll check out that book. Awesome. Thanks. Congrats on all the success with your film, too. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone.